Hi hey everyone, a few weeks ago I wanted to make an enclosure of my 3018 Pro CNC machine to minimise the noise and dust coming off it. I didn't plan to make a full length video of it because it was only a prototype, but it actually turned out much better than I expected, so much so that I've decided to keep it. Luckily I did get some footage of me building it, I'm going to talk you through it today. There's also a link below the video in case you want to download the plans and build your own. But for now let's get stuck in. The first thing to do is to take a look at the plans. All of the measurements given are in millimetres and this is laid out on a standard 2400 by 1200 sheet or an 8x4. The thickness we'll be using today is 12mm and this will be plywood. The enclosure itself is made up of 7 parts, 2 side panels, a back, a base, a top, a front and a door. This light grey area here, this is the channel that will need to be cut out at 3mm deep. You can either do this multiple passes with a table saw, a router or a table router, or if you have a dado stack, it can also be done on one of those. I've included extra space at the bottom of my enclosure to take my PC or for additional storage. If you're not interested in this and you want your enclosure to sit directly on your work surface, then just take off this 123 mil piece at the bottom. And that will mean it sits on your work surface. The other thing to mention is both the front and the top will need one of their long edges cutting at a 45 degree angle. The measurements given are to the shortest edge. If you want to measure to the longest edge then add 17mm. So for example the front would be 87mm if you're measuring it to the longest edge. That's the plan covered so let's get to cutting. So I've sped up the process of cutting the wood because you don't need to see me doing that but while it's playing I'll talk about a few additional bits you'll need to assemble the unit. Screws. Because the wood's only 12mm thick the screws you should be using should be no thicker than 3 or 3.5mm. Three Lengthwise probably 30mm long is ideal, anything shorter may be too weak. You'll also need two hinges for the door. Depending on the thickness of your hinges, the screws to hold that in place should be no longer than about 12mm. You'll also need a handle for the door so you can lift it up. And if you have some wood glue that will also help in the assembly process. If you want something to put on the base of the unit then either felt pads will be ideal or a bit of sticky cork. So here I'm just routering out the channels that I mentioned in the plan section. These should be 3mm deep and 12mm wide. If you have something like a vernier caliper you may want to check the thickness of your ply board because if it's something like 11.7 or 11.8 the tighter you can get this channel the better fit it will be in the end. The last cut to make is the angled cuts on the side where the door will sit. Then we can move on to assembling. You should drill pilot holes through where the channel is and then also place the two pieces together and drill the pilot holes through into the other panel. This will ensure that the plywood doesn't split when you're putting the screws in place. The thickness of your drill should just be a little bit thinner than the screw itself so there's enough for it to hold. You can apply a thin layer of glue to the panel and this will just help it hold it together once the screws are in place. Don't drive the screws in too fast or with too much pressure. Ply board is likely to split so need to be gentle when doing this. Once the two side panels are attached to the base you can roughly see how the machine will sit inside of it and the space you'll have around it. Now we can attach the back. I've already roughly placed this in and got a screw in position but remember to keep everything as square as possible. If you do have a square to hand I would suggest using this when assembling, it'll just make everything fit a bit better. As we did before we just pilot in some holes straight the way through that are countersunk and then we'll place the screws in to keep everything in position. With the back in place we can then do the same with the top and also with the front. A quick dry fit with the door just to make sure it fits. 
If it doesn't, you can always take a little bit off until it's a perfect snug fit. The next step is the window. So the window will be determined by the size of the perspex or the laser shield that you can get. We mark this up, we cut it out and then we attach it. With the window cut out, we can now secure the perspex in place. And this gives us the window to be able to view the CNC machine while it's working. We now move on to adding the hinges and just test that everything works. And the final step is simply to add a handle. And that's how the enclosure was built. Thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed the video click the thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. You'll get more regular updates from my Instagram page at James Dean Designs. In the next video we're going to be talking through some modifications I've made to the enclosure just to improve it. So I'll see you on the next video.